A super, super, really important one is scale. This one you've got to really think about a little bit, and it's easy to fall into a lot of traps with, with uh, scale, using maps and, and scale in and, and, and general. Now, there's a lot of ways that you see scale written. Um, there's certainly these written scales. There are two types of written scales generally. There's this ratio type thing where you'd have 1 to 12,000 as a scale, um, for example. And in this case, with a ratio scale, what you're looking at is one unit on the map is, a, is equivalent to 12,000 of those units on the real landscape. That's what it's saying. So you're looking at like to like. So either that's one inch equals 12,000 inches, one foot equals 12,000 feet. That's what that means, okay? Now the equivalent scale is, is a bit different, and this makes it a little bit, it's a little bit more intuitive, than, at, at least when you're looking at the map. And here what you're saying is one inch on the map is equal to 1,000 feet in this example on the real landscape. So those are, there's, those are two ways that you'll see scale oftentimes written. And uh, it's, it's, clear that it's key that you have those in, in your mind. Now you can switch between those two. Um, does anyone have any idea how you could get between those two scales? How do you get from that one to that one? Or that one to that one? I told you how to get Yeah, exactly. So if I want 1 to 12,000 to be the same as, you know, I want it to mean 1 inch equals 12,000 or 1,000 feet, then, I, then I'd have to go, well, that's 1 inch equals 12,000 feet, so I just, or 12,000 inches rather. So I just divide 12,000 by 12, 12 inches in a foot, boom. All right, so that's one way that you look at scale. So they have different ways of writing those things. Another way is having a graphical scale. And here it's just simply a bar or some sort of representation that's telling you this distance represents this much space on the, on the landscape. Now, these, there are advantages, um, and one of them is, is this problem. Xerox, what I call Xerox distortion. Um, you can take any map you want. You can Xerox it and reduce it. If I have a written scale, I'm not going to have any idea what, what, a, what that really got reduced by. Whereas with a graphical scale... I can, I can tell it's going to be the same. I mean, it's that same distance it should sort of transfer. So in general, graphical scales are the most reliable that you can actually do. Now, there's some ways that if you have just a written scale, you might try to find something on the map that you think you have a good idea of what the, what the width might be, a road or a house footprint or something that could help you. But that's, you're still guessing. So um, again, graphical scales are the best. So one thing to think about there. Let's take a look at some of the common scales. This goes to your question. These are just some of the more common ones that you tend to see out, out, out in the uh, world, at least. Um, statewide scales might be having this. I'm using those two, both the ratio scale here and uh, the equivalent scale, so one inch equal. So and statewide, the ratio scale might be 1 to 250,000, the same as one inch equals 3.95 miles. Big. So to get the whole map on a piece of paper, you really got to shrink it quite a bit. Now the a topo map. This is a very common scale, which is one to twenty-four thousand. Um, that's equivalent to one inch equals two thousand feet. So that's very commonly used. Um, soil. The old paper soil surveys, which are obsolete. You're not supposed to use them. Nothing's supposed to look at them anymore. But they still are out there, and those are. Sort of a funky scale. They're 1 to 15, 840. That's in order to get sort of 1 inch equals 13, uh, 20 feet, which is a quarter of a mile, I think is what they're aiming for. Um, the digital ones are 1 to 12,000, so that goes to that scale we were just looking at. That's 1 inch equals 1,000 feet. And then the DEP orthophotos are the same. And then when you get down to looking at the site level, so now we're starting to look at subdivisions, or individual sites, you're at these very, very fine scales from either 1 to 12,000 or 1,200 down to 1 to 480, which might be a 1 inch equals 100 or down to 1 inch equals 40 feet, and even get less. Um, there's this other column that I had over here. It's just pencil line width. I don't, you know, what the heck are you talking about there? When you, when you look at how USGS and, and other um, sort of mapping organizations look at mapping error, how they assess the accuracy of a map. 
one one element is you know how fine how, well, how much el how much space does the finest line you can draw, which they estimated about one fiftieth of an inch. So if you get a pencil and you sharpen it as sharp as you can, so it's a lethal weapon, and you you make a line, it's about a fiftieth of an inch. And so if you can see at each one of these scales, what I calculated was what does one fiftieth of an inch actually represent? So you can see at a statewide scale, it's about 417 feet. So what that means is if I get a, on a state a map at that scale, a statewide scale, and I draw a line. And I think that's this is where that line should be. That means it could be 417 feet this way, it could be 417 feet that way. It's a big, there's a lot of error in that in that line. That line is sort of broadly represented. So you can see as we go down down to the US to the uh, topo maps, it's about 40 feet. So you generally have about a 40 foot error in those in those maps. Um, down to the soil, soil survey, which might be about 20 feet down to, uh, again, down to where you're looking at a specific site where you really don't have, it's pretty close. You need it close. You're, putting, you're figuring out where roads and buildings are going to be. So that's why scale is incredibly important. That's why you have to think, what are we using the map for? Are we using this map to figure out where buildings and infrastructure is going to go? Are we using it to make a general plan for where, what might happen in our community? Because depending on that, it's going to depend on the kind of scale you're going to need, the level of accuracy, in other words. Oh, yeah, this is just... Um, sometimes you hear this. People say it's a small scale, it's a large scale. This is generally what they mean. A small scale means big areas. So, um, so the way I think of it is it represents elements on the landscape that are really small. In, the, in these maps, whereas down in, in the, uh, these very uh, fine scales, they call that oftentimes the large scale map. 